Hello everyone, I'm glad to be here with you tonight. My name is Nancy Doobie and I'm an HR consultant and I started using LinkedIn back in 2003 to hire people. I was charged with hiring sales managers across the country and I didn't have a budget and they said you better find us some people. And so an engineer friend told me about this new platform that was coming out and it was a big database and it had a bunch of people in it. And I said, well, I'll give it a shot because I didn't have any money to go recruiting with. And that's when I first learned anything about LinkedIn and that was back in 2003. Um, in 2007, I took some training from someone that teaches it worldwide and I have been teaching LinkedIn classes along with my HR business right along since the inception. I actually paid for my daughter's wedding with it. <laughs> it's a lot of money, yes, you're right, but I worked very hard at it. So what I want to do is take you through LinkedIn for business professionals and talk about the seven steps that you should take advantage of. I'm going to give them to you. Um, the presentations are online so that you have, you have them. My handouts aren't really related to this except that one handout is um, something I wrote for the Worcester Business Journal about LinkedIn and the other handout is a brochure of my company and my business card. So that's what's over there. Okay, so I'm going to get started. Very first thing you should do when you think about LinkedIn is give to others. What does that mean? If you go out and you reach out to people that you're meeting, say I'm meeting all of you here tonight and I reach out to you and I give to you something, then that's going to make you happy. Right? And so I do have giveaways tonight for the lucky people that are in here. But I want to give to you. And what does that mean? I want to give you a referral. I want to give you a recommendation. I want to give something to you that's going to help you with your business and your promotion. So in order to optimize your LinkedIn profile, um, you, you need to have recommendations. Now recommendations are something that you get from other people that are on LinkedIn and you ask them for them they write them, they send them to you within LinkedIn, and then you post them and you can cross post them and use them for other things. I've used some of my recommendations on my LinkedIn profile and I've used some of them on my website. They can't be changed, so they're genuine recommendations because you can't go in there and edit it up. You can ask the person that gave it to you to edit it, but otherwise you can't. So get them from business partners, get them from friends, club members, other students, other co-workers. So you always want to be asking for recommendations and you need a minimum of three to optimize your profile. So what do I mean by optimizing? To get to be an expert on LinkedIn. It's really not that hard. Um, you need a few things and I'm going to tell you right now what they are. You need a professional photograph. Don't have a crappy photograph. That's the thing that everybody knows about you. So make sure that you're using a really good photograph. Have one done, um, not cut out with somebody else in it. That's your professional image and that's what other people see. You want an enhanced profile, which means you want every sec section of your LinkedIn profile filled in. And I'm going to take you there before the end of this. Um, you want relevant content. So I talk about Doobie Consulting, which is my business. I talk about First Beacon, which is my business. And I talk and I use a lot, a lot of keywords. Does everybody know what a keyword is? Yeah. Okay, so I use lots of keywords about human resource consulting, about LinkedIn in my profile so that it helps me to optimize and get seen um, and, and get noticed by others. Um, I put in relevant experience. I put in a summary with my goals. Um, I have 35 or so recommendations on there. Um, 
sometimes people just like to give them to me. Um, I'm not going to say no, but I don't really need any more. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's all you really need to optimize is three. Um, I put in all my skills and all my expertise. And then this is kind of like what your profile will look like. And you see where it says lion? This is kind of an old shot of it. But lion means linked in open networker. And that means that when somebody asks, will you request, um, will you um, connect with them, a LinkedIn open networker says, yes, we will connect with them. Um, there's two schools of thought on that, connecting to people that you know and then connecting to people that you don't know. Now, I may connect to people I don't know if we're in the same professional association, if we're in the same group. Um, people in my BNI group, I may connect with them. People in your Rotary group, you might want to connect with them, you might want to connect with. If you're a realtor, you might want to connect with other realtors. Um, you you want to con 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 connect with business owners and you want to connect with like maybe a mortgage company, et cetera, et cetera. So you want to look at who you're connecting with and unless you're really sure who you're connecting with and what the purpose is, then say no and ignore it. Um, LinkedIn has almost 400 million now um, members on it and it's worldwide. So it's a pretty big network. You'll find that the CEOs of companies and businesses are on it along with other people um, just like you and I. The key to learning about LinkedIn is to learn about connections. And Lee, here on the side, um, Lee is a, is me, okay? And so me connecting to, I knew Cheryl, okay? So Cheryl connected me to Laura, and that's how I came here today. So when I reach out, just like Lee did, to Cheryl, that's my level one connection. I know her, we knew each other long before we came here. We knew each other from another life. Um, but I didn't know Laura, and Cheryl reached out and said, gee, I'd really like you to talk to Laura. Well, Laura's the level two connection. And then there was some technical support, and Laura said to me, you have to reach out to Chris. And Chris is my level three connection. So that's how connections work. Now, when you go out networking, it's very easy to talk to somebody, and you come back with a business card, and you want to use that business card to connect with the person and you might want to send them a little message like it was very nice to meet you today at the Rotary Club. Um, I'd love to connect with you on LinkedIn. You now have access to all of the other person's uh, connections and how hard is it for you to do what we did, to do what what Cheryl and Laura and I did to connect. It's pretty easy. I mean, I have no problem picking up the phone or sending an invitation to Cheryl and say, Cheryl, I need this. And she didn't have any problem in reverse doing that to me. So that's where the power of the connections is. Your level two connections are always your most important connections because you don't know who they know. So you can import lists. Um, through LinkedIn, you can take an Excel list and you can import the entire list in. So if you had rotary lists for your chapters and stuff, you would be able to um, import them into LinkedIn. You would ask other people to connect. Um, you can add a LinkedIn signature, which is your URL, and I'm going to show that to you. Um, you can add your URL to the end of an email or a, fa or a Facebook blast or anything else, any other form of social media, you can, you can add that email to. If you're doing a resume, you can put it on a resume. Um, you can add it to your business cards. On the back of my business cards, I just have pictures of social media symbols versus, versus the actual URL because I want people to know that I'm on all the social media. and feel free to reach out and connect with me, and I hope everybody here will. Um, 
to start receiving inbound uh, invitations to groups and stuff, you want to join a few groups and then you want, you want to start trying to connect to people in groups and then write something, post to the wall of the group, like just like you would in Facebook, but you're the expert. So you, you want to give them really good content. So making it personal means taking it from the handshake that you have. Maybe you're going to connect with them. I might connect with some of you tonight and maybe some of you will reach out to me and we'll go for a cup of coffee. We'll talk more. You'll have other questions. I'll answer them. That's the beginning of a networking relationship, just like you would do with anything else. And that's what I love about LinkedIn, is that I take it and I use it for all of my connections. I get work out of it because people see me and that I'm active and I'm out there and I'm talking about it. And I make it very personal. I reach out and I but again, I, I ask all of you to please try and connect with me because I don't have everybody's contact information at this point. Okay. So building your community. How do you build your community? You build it through charity work. You build it through professional associations. You build it through book clubs, uh, friends, family, schools that you went to, etc. Um, so any of those people that you meet, they become part of your network and you, you want to connect with them. So I want to make sure that you understand the power of community. So again, the first degree connection was Cheryl to myself. The second degree connection went over here to Laura. The third con degree connection went up to her husband. So you can see that it's pretty easy. It was pretty easy for Cheryl to connect me with Laura and now I have all of Laura's connections and I'll be able to mine her connections and look for people that she does business with that might be interested in either other LinkedIn training or HR services. Because I predominantly work with small and mid-sized businesses that don't have their own HR department. So it's been a win-win for me in terms of opening the doors by using just plain old networking, LinkedIn, and then getting in front of my targeted audience because people don't usually turn over their HR records to somebody they don't know. So I build my relationships first and that's what I work on. So start by joining some clubs, um, leveraging your contacts, and really, really reaching out. Um, if you belong to Chambers of Commerce, if you belong to um, I'm the chair of the Center for Women in Enterprise Advisory Board, so I have CWE's logo on here. I have LinkedIn Open Networker. I, I'm past president of the Holden BNI, so I have my business networking connections. It, this is Boston Recruiters Group's logo, and Boston Recruiters Group has over 10,000 members in it, and we help people find jobs. And we help you hire people. So you need to create your own call to action, whatever you want people to do for you, by building on the relationships that you have. And if you want more leads and sales, you can't use the cup and the string anymore. It just doesn't work. I keep trying, but it doesn't work. I can't get to you from there. So um, you want to customize your link. And this is what I was talking about when I said a URL. Um, everybody's URL will start with the HTTP colon slash slash LinkedIn.com slash in slash and then try and get your name or try and get your business name. So again, you could put that on a resume, you could put it on another document, you could put it in your signature of your email so people could connect and look at your profile and talk to you. This information is all on the slides. so you. You can just pull it off there, yes. I wanted to know, um, are people still doing resumes or are they doing um, over their LinkedIn profile? Or, you know, Both. Doing both. Both. Okay. Um, what we're doing for most cases is we're still doing resumes and we're beefing them up, but we're streamlining them to put them into LinkedIn so that we can showcase and we can leverage the connections for them to do research. So
No. We actually put it into each section of the LinkedIn profile. But it doesn't just have to be your resume. And when I show you mine, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, then when you have a business LinkedIn URL, that's my Doobie Consulting one. So I have both. Um, you can bring in other applications into it, like a slide share, like a presentation, um, like something from Pinterest, SunCloud. Um, I have a lot of YouTube videos, um, and that's why I asked to be recorded tonight, because I, I love having the YouTube videos to be able to upload and show new content to people. Of course, you can do this on your cell phone. Um, and I walk around with all my contacts, all 4,500 contacts on my cell phone every day. So if I need somebody, I've got their number, I've got their email, I've got everything on my phone through my LinkedIn account. I mean, how nice is that? It's a mobile office. That means wherever I am, I have whatever I need. And I use an app called Dropbox and I keep all my files in Dropbox, and um, I use Office 365, and I can log in anywhere I am. Um, I can pull up all my connections. I can pull up my presentations. I can pull up documents. I just have to be conscious of, am I on a closed network or, on, or am I on an open network? Because I do HR work, it's so confidential. With LinkedIn, I don't have to worry quite as much about it. So your action plan is to create a sense of clarity and to decide what you want to do with it. Um, find out the essential building blocks, develop a marketing plan, and use LinkedIn as one of the tools in the marketing plan. Discover the number one thing that's stopping you. Are you afraid to do this? Is it too time consuming? I usually tell people to do one connection a day, five a week, 25 a month, and you'll be growing like crazy. And that's how I started doing it. And, and now when I'm speaking with groups, I'm meeting so many people that my connections are just crazy. Um, and I do a lot of networking, yes. Do I lead? Um, at times. At times. If perhaps somebody has fallen out of favor or they've done something that I don't want to be attached to them anymore, then yes, I delete them right out. And they don't know I've deleted them out. So that's the other good thing. Um, yeah, I, I weed. <laughs> um, the idea is to just take the first step and just do it. And you have all of my contact information. Now I want to take you over live to uh, LinkedIn and go through some of the profile with you and show you how it works and answer questions live. So does that work? Okay. Now all I have to do is close this thing. Uh-oh. I'm good. <laughs> I thought I closed the whole thing. Yes. Those are advanced applications that you can add into um, that you can add into. She's together. Right, thank so you. Really I'm sorry I couldn't get there. Uh, and then cloud, just so people don't know what the cloud is, it means instead of putting all of your files on your laptop on the hard disk, it's actually going out on the internet to some kind of server that someone else owns. So right. that means you can go anywhere, as long as you have internet access, to access that information. So it's a really good way of being prepared for storage and and not having to worry out of running out of space and carrying your laptop with you all the time. Right. You can access that information from any device that has internet access. Which is why it's kind of an encrypted vault. Mm. Um, it's different. It's, it's different. Your pictures out there instead of locally. Okay. 
and I'll show you a couple applications of that. This is my profile. This purple pot is called a header, and that's something new that you can put in just to make it look pretty. Um, professional image taken, my name, and what I do. Then there are free accounts, that's what everybody starts out with, and then there are premium accounts. And the reason that you would go to premium accounts if you're in finance or if you're in sales you might, or you're a recruiter, you might want to get a premium account because you have the ability to connect to people that you don't already know. And, and further in the relationships, you can connect directly to that second or third person because you have something called in-mail and you can send them an in-mail invite to connect with you. So when you're doing your profile and when you're really in the beginner stage of your profile, you want to go to edit profile and then everything here is clickable. So if I wanted to change my photo, everything is clickable. I would upload a photo, put it in. Each line of this, whatever I do, I can click on it and I can put it in here. This is my customized URL, and to get to that, you see this picture up here in the corner? Underneath this is something called Privacy and Settings, and that's how you turn things off and on. This is a very important thing to take down, the Privacy and Settings. It's asking me for a password again, which it often does. Oh, come on. Okay, so it's bringing me into the back end of my profile. And the reason that I want this is when I'm working on my profile, I want to be able to turn things off. I want to turn off the broadcast. I want to turn off what other people see. Because I want to put my profile together and I don't want it to keep going out there to the whole world. So it's important to shut these things off. And it's as simple as unchecking a box or checking a box. It's as simple as choosing who else you want to see it or not. So you can do the same thing with your activity feed. You can make it everyone or you can make it only you and while you're working on it maybe you just want to turn it to only you and get your whole profile completed and then go back and turn this on. So knowing where the privacy settings are is, is an important factor. Um, you can find out a lot of things about your account and you can edit your account, but I wanted to make sure that you knew how to shut this off and on because it's an important point. So again, it's underneath your picture, it's privacy and settings, it'll ask you for your password again and then you can shut things off and on. Privacy and settings and then you can turn these off or on so while you're working on it, um, you're not going to have... Um, people seeing it going out into your live stream. So going back to my profile and edit profile, I have a customized URL. And what I want to teach all of you today is how to get all the way up here to All Star. If you got to expert, it'd be great. But if you do all seven of those things, if you get a picture and you put it up there, if you start making connections and you work on those connections, after you get 500 connections, you're going to get up here to All Star. And you have three recommendations. And your profile is completely filled out. And you've joined some groups. That's why it's all in the presentation. You can put in all of your volunteer experience. Then you can put in flyers and things that you're working on and I can do this right from my phone. So I started a job seeker network in, Fram in Framingham in Worcester and we meet every Monday morning and it's free and it's open to the public. So I put up a flyer and it lets people know that it exists. This is um, me talking on an HR topic at a forum at Nichols College and this is another business series that I spoke at. In here I have my summary you can see it's pretty basic. This is um, a video that came from uh, Channel 3 
from Ramona. And this is somebody videoing me about employee handbooks, and I can talk about it. And so these are YouTube videos that I've uploaded. Okay, I, I just want to show you that, that you can fill in as much content and bring in as many pictures as you want, and everything is just under edit. And it can go on and on and on. I'm still going. These are skills and endorsements, and these skills and endorsements help you to rank within um, LinkedIn. And so that's what people click on, and they say, I'm, I'm, I'm endorsing you. It's different than a recommendation. Projects and free work that you've done, um, honors and awards that you've received, courses that you've taken, volunteer work, um, publications if you wrote an article in a newspaper, um, you could import that publication into this. Certifications, organizations, education. I know I'm going really fast because I'm on the clock here. Um, and then as many recommendations as you want up there. And all you have to do is ask to be recommended and what do you want to be recommended for. Joining groups, adding companies, adding schools, and that's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you. Really fast. It's too hard to do in 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. When you send a message, like contact that person, that first or second round, rank, whatever you call it, uh, you hit the uh, send, you want to send a message or send an email, that's how you do it? You, you can do it that way, or you can do it through advanced search, where you can put in someone's name, you can look for them, you can decide what organization or what area, what location, you can drill down by zip code, and so you can target your audience. So I could do a search here for CEOs within a 50 mile radius of this area and say, okay, that's going to be my target market. And then I'm going to reach out to those individuals and target them. You can also do this by income level and all sorts of other things. I do teach this. I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. I'm happy to put together a small group if that's something that you want to do hands-on, like a little workshop and you bring your laptops and we do it. Um, I love LinkedIn. It's been a great tool for me, and I hope you like it too. Thank you.